The offensive firepower. How many weapons this powerful Zags team has? They got a ton. I mean, all five starters are averaging in double figures. And Mark Few, on any given night, can rely on somebody. And of course, we talk about Drew Timmy. We talk about Chet Holmgren all the time, and deservedly so. But to me, it's about Andrew Nemhard. Uh, and here's a guy that's the unsung hero of everything that goes offensively for Gonzaga. Mark Few told me that he sleeps well at night knowing that number three has his hands on the ball and is making the decision in game situations and one area that he's improved a lot in is coming up on ball screens and knowing when to score and being a little bit more aggressive in that regards and i think that helps take this team to the next level and when you think about gonzaga at the next level there is only one more level for them to go after the success they had a season ago and that's bringing home their first national championship to spokane and that still remains the focus of this group and they've had a sensational start this year and a lot of it has to do with the stabilizing unselfish nature of Andrew Nemhard and all that wealth of experience that he brought with him from Florida. Well, let's see how tonight goes for the number two ranked Zags. San Diego, I think, has been one of these surprise teams in a deep and talented West Coast Conference. Dave, I believe it's pronounced San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> the Toreros are six and three in third place in the West Coast Conference coming into tonight's game. And Timmy right away goes to work and scores the first bucket of the night. That's a problem. I mean, look, there's no secret tonight. And you look at size, strength, and, and ability to score in the paint. If, if San Diego's going to have any chance, they have to close off the paint. And they have to pin you on one side of the floor. They cannot allow Gonzaga to run their offense. Down low. Well, Brown soars. Transfer from Pitt, who's a good shot blocker. Has some blossoming offensive game. He ties the game up. Well, the big thing for him, you mentioned it. He goes, listen, when I was at Pitt, you know, I was kind of limited offensively what I could do and really worked hard to develop that aspect of his game and become more of a threat. Jimmy will shoot from that elbow area. A little bit too strong. Josh Parrish with the rebound, and Parrish got cut off by the freshman Chet Holmgren. Hey, we enjoyed our chat with Terrell Brown source. We'll talk a little bit more about that and how he's trying to help his team that lob Even with his leaping ability was a little too high but good hustle and then San Diego throws the ball out of bounds We were watching the baseball team practice a little That's like major league Try the corner and missed and that was just a bit outside <laughs> E4 whatever uh, It's a beautiful day here. What a great campus It really is San Diego's had some success in their basketball history. Timmy up and under and good with the shot blocker in his face. And, and his footwork is, is well documented, the best footwork of any big in college basketball. And what he does a great job of, feeling the defense, looking, identifying where any help may be particularly coming from, and then using an angle to be successful. Down low, Brown soars, had some room, kind of waited to make his move, scores anyway. Brown Soros got four and Timmy's got four. Right now it's a one-on-one -on -one game and it's all about the post-up. Here's Nemhard using that screen from Holmgren. Just what you talked about, looking to be more aggressive on the offensive end. Earlier this year he comes off and he stops there and he's looking to distribute the ball. And you love that unselfishness. It's innate within him to be unselfish, but he, he's got to be aggressive and continue to look for that shot. Went for the steal. Wayne McKinney, a talented freshman, is going to go to the bucket. Holmgren blocked the shot, but they'll call the foul. Maybe against Nemhard. So a personal foul against Gonzaga. We give two free throws to San Diego. There's Mark Few, 23rd year. All the talent they lost from last year's team that made it to the national championship game, and yet here we are, second-ranked team in the country, 17 and two. They just. What can you say about Mark Few and how this program has continued to operate, continue to sustain and grow during his tenure? And I, and I get it. Everybody wants the national championship. Mark wants the national championship. But when you look at the programs in college basketball, in particular the last two years, Baylor and Gonzaga have separated themselves. And you look over the last decade, I mean, you can you can throw Kentucky, you can throw Villanova. Gonzaga's right there with the Dukes of the world. And all that they've accomplished during this period of time. We we're talking with Mark Few today about how in his early years, I mean, he's been around for a long time now, but in his early years, this San Diego program was one of the big challenges to Gonzaga in the WCC. Brad Holland had done a great job with this team uh, and this program. In fact, when I was an assistant at Pepperdine, the conference tournament was held inside this building. 
That's a phenomenal facility. And when you look at the facility, geographical location, where San Diego's at right now in the standings is where they should be expected to be every single year. Pieces are here for this to be a successful program. The three, no good. Brown Swords got a hand on the rebound, but Rajir Bolton came down with it. The transfer who's fit in beautifully with this Gonzaga team. That was good defense from Wayne McKinney. The defense is going to be very key for San Diego tonight. They got to get back in defensive transition and cut off the paint. Sam Scholl, whose team has played good defense, it's his fourth year as the head coach. A player for the Toreros. Been here for a long, long time. Part of this program cares deeply about USD. Emhart pull up is good. And, and what he's doing is identifying the spot on the floor he can get to, get set, and get a shot off. For, an, for a score, that's one of the easiest ways you can to find your, your rhythm and flow. When you over penetrate, you sometimes dribble into traffic. Bolton just stole the ball away. And now Bolton out on the break is going to dunk it home. You have to value the basketball. There, there may not be a better team scoring off of transition turnovers than the Gonzaga Bulldogs in all of Division One. And Joey Calcaterra, he's a good player for USD. He gets the ball here up top, but Bolton just kind of bullied him and took the ball away. Calcaterra misses Timmy, and here comes Bolton once again. He missed dribbled, and he's going to be called for the personal. A little loose with the handle and then made contact as he ran through. But Gonzaga now doubling up San Diego. Things were even back and forth. Bottom half of the conference that has really struggled. They played Loyola twice, they played Pepperdine twice. They've had the opportunity to get some wins down there. Their, their back schedule is loaded heavy, and it starts kind of here tonight because they've got Santa Clara coming to this building on Saturday. And it, is, it is what you're supposed to do take advantage when you have. The softer part of the schedule, nearly a turnover, but San Diego breaks the pressure. Got off a good look. Timmy with the rebound. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, look, one of the things we talked about was, okay, this San Diego, now every game kind of picks up as far as intensity. You want to stay where you're at in the conference rankings, then you start taking care of business against some of the teams that maybe you're not expected to win against. Nice little move from the freshman Nolan Hickman, who I think is really, I mean, he's shown some flashes, but I think he's starting to emerge. Yeah, he's going to be special. I, I think you close your eyes, you start thinking about next year and what this Gonzaga team might look like with him taking a lot of shots and being a central part. You get excited. A whistle and I think the shot clock. Had a little issue with the clock here. We're going to try to sort out at the scores table. <laughs> That we've seen early is two turnovers that led to four Gonzaga points. They're coming off the screens. They're able to get downhill. Watch this on ball screen, and they're attacking and getting a piece of the paint off of that. Whether it's stopping at the free throw line for the two jump shots Nemhard had, or that time Hickman turning the corner. One of the things you've got to do defensively, Dave, is when the on ball screen is coming, can you position yourself not to trail and follow off that screen? but have them reject the on-ball screen and have built-in help coming in the opposite direction. 10 of the 12 points have come in the paint so far for Gonzaga. Shot clock winding down. They leave the big man open for three, and Brown Soares knocks it down. Great start for him tonight. He's been great. He's got six of the team's seven points. Excuse me, seven of the eight. Yeah, seven of eight. The math is fuzzy. Here's Julian Strother. That one a little too strong. He's got himself a rebound, too. I think it's worth repeating. He said it to us earlier today. He wasn't a threat at Pitt, and he's more of a threat now. And I think Gonzaga that time was paying attention to him, and they left Calcaterra open. Yeah, give up space, give up real estate. Same thing we're talking about. Gonzaga having success with that time. They allow Joey in the middle of the paint. Emhart goes baseline up and under, no good. Here comes USD. Three corner. That one goes down to tie the game. Chase Townsend was the first player in the gym today when we showed back up to get ready for game time. At 4 p.m., he was already out here getting a workout in. And then when the team came out, he was taking the most game ready shots in warmups. Didn't he short arm that one. Here is Townsend. We're just talking about him. Holmgren almost stole the ball away. Out of bounds off of 
the talented Gonzaga freshman. A 7 0 run for the Toreros. A good response out of that first time out. Come back out. Dribble penetration. One thing you can ill afford to do is help off a ball side corner. And that was clearly, by the way, Townsend is definitely not Chet Holmgren's mark, but you've got to be aware of where the shooter is out on the floor. Make sure you stay attached and be able to close out and contest. Emhart didn't use a three. Tried to bounce it through the lane. It goes off the leg, I think, of a San Diego defender and out of bounds. We'll try to feed that one down to Watson, who is open. Anton Watson in. Both teams starting to use the bench a little bit. Vladimir Pinchuk, Yavuz Tekken also in for San Diego. Nemhard, tough defense, but a good pass to Watson to lay it in. And, and see, that's a great read that time by Nemhard. It, it, it's just skill. That's a small window. It's the look that he had on the previous possession that went out of bounds. He knew it was going to be available. He made the slight adjustment to make sure the ball got there. Wayne McKinney went by, had his shot altered, I think, by Nemhard. Holmgren with the rebound on the seven footer can bring the ball up the court. Holmgren, spin move, draws a foul. And they're going to call that one on the ground, but you see it's a sampling right there of the skill set. And not a lot of times, it, it, look, Chet has the skill set, but he also has a coach that empowers him to utilize that skill set. You know, I mean, there's a lot of coaches, the center gets the ball, they're saying, hey, find a guard. But we've seen this with Timmy, we've seen it with Holmgren. Like, allow him to go ahead and make a play because the athleticism, the footwork, and how comfortable they are with the ball in their hands makes their offense that much more dynamic. I think I would have called that a shooting foul personally, but foul on the floor, Gonzaga will inbound. I would have too. I agree with you, Dave. Defense! 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 Every once in a while, Strother down the lane, Julian Strother, he's had a big time breakout here for the Zags. Uh, he, he, Mike, Mike Schmitz is going to be joining us a little bit later on, and he'll be one of the guys that Inevitably, we'll get around to talking to beca about because he's had such a tremendous season so far. Really a breakout year. ESPN draft analyst Mike Schmitz is here in the building tonight with us. We are going to have Mike as part of our broadcast. Down low. Nice quick little spin move, but then Pinchuk just chucked up an air ball. Down low to Watson. Anton Watson got cut off and scored anyway. Yeah, his footwork and Anton Watson has had some really good games this year. I mean, his season best 19 points against Pepperdine. He's managing not to turn over the ball better. He's got two double doubles on the season, averaging almost 12 points per game over the last four. So we talk about the starters averaging in double figures, but. Watson has kind of emerged as that other guy coming off the bench. Yeah, they got firepower off the bench as well. Holmgren forced a travel. That's a San Diego turnover. Well, speaking of Mike, he's going to join us when we come back and talk about the top of the NBA draft. Mike's going to get ready. We'll be back right after this. Yes, Mike, put the headset on. Assessment of where Paolo is right now and what have you seen that you like and what do you want to see more? He's the best shot creator of the three. He's the most physically ready of the three. When you talk about a guy 6'10", 250 pounds, who can play really anywhere on the floor offensively. I mean, they'll use him as a screener or a ball handler in pick and roll. And, ooh, Timmy, that, he can play pick and roll too. But I was really impressed with his ability to get to his spots in mid-range, his ability to get to his pull-up, uh, the fact that he can push in transition, he can get downhill, he's physical. I just want to see him fully engaged defensively all the time. I think that's the next step for him. He had a huge block at the rim. He's starting to show glimpses, but that's the main area of growth for Paolo Bancaro moving forward. It is kind of cool. One of the reasons why we wanted to have, I mean, not just because Mike is here, but a week where Mike's getting a chance to see in person, all in a short window of time, the top three prospects for the upcoming NBA draft. One of which we have here in this game. They're going to yeah, call lane, lane violation. violation. So the missed free throw, Timmy is going to get another opportunity. But you talk about those top prospects and the three that Mike has seen this week, Chet, 
Holmgren here in this game. Paolo, he just was talking about with Duke on Monday. Jabari Smith with Auburn. You love Jabari Smith. I, I love Jabari Smith. Drew Timmy makes him pay, by the way, for the lane violation. Uh, extra point for Gonzaga there. That one that they couldn't, and now they're going to extend out their press. You, you saw Jabari. What's your thoughts on where Jabari is? Six foot ten on the best player on the nation's number one team, Mike. Man, he, he is something special, you know, in terms of not just how he is as a player, but as a person. And I was able to sit down and break down some film with him for about 45 minutes. Woo. And, woo, nice finish. Yeah, nice Hunter Salas, who someday is going to be a big prospect, I think, himself with a nice move. Continue, Mike. Yeah, and he's someone we've we've been following for a couple of years, Hunter Salas. He's, he's an explosive athlete, and I think it's just the physicality piece and, and the game slowing down for him, but certainly has a chance, you know, down the road. Um, yeah, Jabari, back, back to, you know, what I saw in terms of the actual play. I mean, defensively, I think he's the best of the three on the perimeter. He can really, really guard his position. He has tremendous feet at 6'10", and then he's the best shooter of the bunch, no doubt about that. Um, absolutely knocked down off the catch. He's great in mid-range spots. He picked on tipping there. So I left there thinking that he has a real chance to go number one, and I would slide him right ahead of Bancaro in a head-to-head -head matchup there. All right, so that brings us to the big man who's on the bench right now for Gonzaga, Chet Holmgren. Where is he at? Because, you know, you go back to the Texas game earlier this season, and, and people kind of, like, freaked out a little bit about that. And then you see some of these other numbers that he's throwing up and how he's getting more comfortable, getting to his spot in the rhythm and flow offensively to, I think, where Mark Few wants him. Where is he at right now in your eyes? I still think he's the, the top prospect as Timmy gets blocked there at the rim. But... You know, I think it's close, uh, especially between him and Jabari Smith, uh, but I would still have him number one. I mean, if you look at the numbers, I know it's conference plates at WCC, but he's the only guy in NCAA history. Nice footwork there. Good charge by Anton Watson in transition. In today's college basketball, every single time you lower your shoulder down to the defensive player like that, that call is going to go against you. Sorry, Mike, go ahead. I, Holmgren is the only player in NCAA history, okay, to average at least three blocks a game and shoot at least 70% from two and 40% from three. Like, we, we, we've never seen this type of player, and that speaks to just how rare of a talent he is. So I'm enamored with what he brings on the defensive end of the floor as a shot blocker, his ability to space the floor as a shooter, shooting 45% from three, and then can also handle and transition and create offense. So for me, he's still the number one pick but again that's why we're coming out that's why we're watching and constantly evaluating these guys there's Chet Holmgren on the bench for a moment 21 14 his Zags lead here in San Diego Holmgren's the block shots I mean obviously you know you, you love to see a guy bring the ball up at that size shoot the threes but the, the innate shot blocking ability Mike seems so special to me yes yeah, it's, it's the timing and, and the toughness too I think that's what people get wrong about Chet Holmgren is his finish. It, it is, they see the body, they see the slight frame, and they think he's soft. And that's where you get yourself in trouble. That's where you get fired as a top executive if you're going to just make that assumption that because he's skinny, he's soft. I think people made that mistake with Evan Mobley as well. They looked and they said, oh, he's got a slight frame. Who, how is he going to handle Jokic and Embiid and, and some of these bigs? And he's been just fine. So that's what I love most about Chet is that nasty streak that he has. Well, the reality is nobody's handling Jokic and Embiid, <laughs> so we can put that to bed. Um, here's the interesting thing. If you're, if you're drafted at number one, you're looking at somebody that's a game changer for your organization. You're looking at somebody that's going to completely change the trajectory of where you're at. That's your hope every single year. Now, not all number ones are created equal. We know that. To me, when I look at Jabari Smith and the way he defends and the way that he shoots and the way that he moves and the way that you can close your eyes and say plus 20 pounds, how much better is he going to be? To me, he's the number one guy. Where am I wrong? I don't think you're wrong in, in that assessment. Now, what I would say is I think he has probably the highest floor because at the very least you're getting a guy who's elite guarding his position at 6'10 and is an elite floor spacer. Now, where I want to see him improve to become like a true number one guy you can run your offense through is as a ball handler and a passer. You know, he still needs to improve his flexibility, his agility when the ball's in his hand. You know, he gets bumped off his spots a little bit. And then his playmaking, you know, he's he's the worst passer of the three. And if you look at a lot of the best players in the NBA, they can really facilitate. So that's my only question mark with him. But he's improved so much over the course of his high school career, now his college career, that I would project him to really maximize his potential in those areas. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of his. You can't go wrong with all three of them. As always, Mike, great stuff. 
21-14 our score. Who knows? We might check back with in, in with you a little bit later. But thanks. Interesting week for you to get to see all three of those top guys. Thanks, fellas. Mike Schmitz, who does such great work for us, and Chet Holmgren. Dave, this game has gotten a little sloppy it in has. the last couple of minutes. Uh, it, it just guys a little bit out of control, unsettled at both ends of the floor. Yeah, that's not just the Torreira. Zag's been a little sloppy as well. Lombard, nice ball handling. Drew Timmy, I think he struggled a little bit with the shot blocking of Brown Soares. Even that one didn't go down. And they're going to call another foul against Gonzaga. That one goes against Watson. But part of the problem with Timmy, he's driving underneath the basket. He's trying to go for these reverse layups because the shot blocker, he's trying to use the rim to protect instead of going up strong through his chest. Including but, against the Zags. Yeah, I was there for that game up in Seattle. And Zags' schedule upcoming. You think about the game at BYU, that's going to be a great environment with one of the best student sections in the country in the Rock. And then, uh, who knows? You know, Dave, I haven't been to Spokane this year. That is amazing. That, that's about to change. We got to rectify that. That's changing. How about one week from Saturday? Flatbread it up, baby. The Farnham flatbread is going to be rolling on the 11th and 12th. <laughs> Sales projections through the roof. I might even serve. I'm going to ask the Davenport if they'll let me serve the Farnham flatbread on Friday the 11th, the night before. Oh. Wow! <laughs> Chet Holmgren went way up high to slam that one down. Now, that was impressive. That's his first shot attempt. Wasn't so much a shot attempt as it was just an incredible catch and dunk in one motion. How great is it to be a guard and know that you can literally throw it anywhere wow. and he's going to catch it and throw it down like that? That was sensational. So Holmgren back in the game. I was going to say, like, I think Mark Few would like to see a little impact from Chet. That counts as impact. And he goes down, got hit hard. Well, and I'll tell you why the offense got stagnant. We were talking to Mike Schmitz, and they had missed six straight shots during that three-minute stretch. But look at this pass. One hand, go up and finish like that. Absolutely bananas and fun to watch this young man get up there at the top of the square and throw it down like that. That is really true. That, uh, football, they call that catch radius. You can just kind of throw it anywhere in the neighborhood. We were watching that in the skills challenge earlier tonight on ESPN. <laughs> Amhard couldn't finish there. I'd like to see your catch radius. It's not like Chet Holmgren's, that's for sure. <laughs> Townsend down the lane, scores. One thing I know about Chris Patola, who's back in studio tonight, great catch radius. Holmgren in transition, three, a little too strong. He makes a lot of those, Chet Holmgren yeah. does. That's a good shot. I mean, Mark Hughes is not going to have any problem with him in transition in that trail three situation. One of, one of the things that San Diego's done a much better job is by not turning over the ball, it's allowed them to get back. They have not allowed a lot of clean transition. Look at the, the emphasis defensively to try to get more white jerseys below the level of the ball in transition and force Gonzaga to have to run their offense. Huge challenge against this Gonzaga team to slow up that transition game. Nice pass from Holmgren. Bolton will turn around and miss the little short jumper. Look, you, you, you slow the game down. You don't turn the ball over. I think these are, you got to be physical. You have to be attention to detail at both ends of the floor. Look, there's a lot of things you have to do to try to beat Gonzaga in the WCC. That one was a little too strong. Strother, nice defensive rebound. Look out. Another one to Holmgren. This time from Bolton. And Chet actually identified it. I don't know if we had the angle, but Chet, as he was running down the floor, long before that pass even went up, he gave a little bit of that look in the eyes and said, hey, I got a seam, I got a lane. Throw it up there. Bolton saw it, and Chet Holmgren went out and got it. How impressive has Chet been? Two emphatic dunks. Put his finger up, and that's going to be the signal. Hey, I've got a lane, and Drew Timmy... Keeps that defensive player occupied, and there's nobody there to stop him from running to the rim. That's why Mike Schmitz thinks he should be the number one pick in the NBA draft, among some other things. I hope it's more than just his dunking ability. <laughs> dunking ability is pretty spectacular. <laughs> Marcellus Erlington's been quiet in this game. He's been the leading scorer for USD. A little too strong on that jumper. And again, look, four, four guys back. 
only two blue, uh, three blue jerseys there. You got a number situation. You're forcing Gonzaga to have to run their half court offense. Now, let's not act like that's great because Gonzaga is the most efficient offense in the half court of any team in college basketball. Strother goes right down the lane and off the glass. So smooth, so long. Getting more compact with his game. And what I mean with that is when he attacks you off the bounce, the handle isn't loose. He's not leaving it away from his body. Everything's coming in, being more compact, able to finish through contact. Okay, who averages seven minutes a game last year on that super talented team. Holmgren alters that one, but Pinchuk managed to finish anyway. Here's Strother for three. Off for him. Long rebound out to Nebhard. Nice quick look to Timmy. Well, Timmy was the one that poked that ball out and then immediately has his hand set, and Nemhar just gave it right back to him. Alcatara almost traveled. Pinchuk going right at Chad Holmgren. This time, the freshman got a piece of it. Block shot for Holmgren. Puts it on the ground and lays it in. <laughs> How many teams run dribble handoff action for their seven foot tall senior? I mean, center. I mean, that is just incredible to think about. Just a little flip and a dribble handoff action, and here comes Chet right down the lane. I can tell you how many do. It's one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just his skill set is so unique. In short, nice rebound, Holmgren, who has just come to life in these last few minutes. Here's Nemhard downhill quickly. Nemhard scores. That's the assertiveness that you want to see from number three. Um, just completely blow by, uses speed and quickness, dropped his shoulder, got it lower than the defensive player, and just finished. Zag starting to stretch this lead out here on a nice run. Pinchuk had it knocked away. 10-2 run for Gonzaga, trying to add to that and a foul. That's intentional. Yeah, they're going to call that as intentional. Yeah. That is a complete wrap-up. You can't do that. There was no play for the ball whatsoever there. Well, Mike Schmitz is here, and he's here for one reason. For this guy. Number 34 is had the same nutritionist. But you want to see a larger chest cavity. In a lot of the NBA players, they have that thickness, that girth to them, right? They're a little bit thicker. Chet's a little bit more narrow. His chest cavity, his strength, his shoulders are going to have to improve as time goes on, just like Mr. Spatola back in studio. Chest cavity. Okay, write that down on your draft report card. I, I, could, I mean, it, there's, there's something to it. Like, my wife one time walked up. She goes, Sean, how come you didn't play in the NBA? I said, because I wasn't good enough. That would be number one. Number two would be this. And we walked into the gym, and Elton Brand was working out. And I said, she goes, he is massive. And I said, wrong, he's undersized. Like, that's, that's how unique NBA players' bodies and statures are. Now, things have changed and evolved over time, and I think a lot of that has to do with guys like Steph Curry and what, what he's been able to do to the game and change the idea of what an NBA star can be. The game is faster, it's less physical now, but it matters. It does. Gonzaga got those two free throws after that foul call, plus the ball, but they didn't score. So San Diego down 15, under two minutes to go first half. Ferreros were hanging with the Zags in the early minutes. Calcaterra off the glass. It's a 26-12 advantage in the paint in the first half. And that's where Gonzaga historically has done its damage. Holmgren underneath the basket. Makes you think that he's going to go for the reverse, and he comes right back on the strong side. That's his basketball IQ. So we talk about some of his skill set. One of the things we don't probably talk about enough is his feel and his IQ of the game. There were Darren Parrish to shoot. He just say that's not his role on this team. Kenny. That was almost a turnover. Parrish makes his move against Timmy. Missed it. Offensive rebound. Brown soars. One dribble. Holmgren swats it and keeps it in play. <laughs> Man, we're seeing it all from Chet Holmgren. He is feeling very confident right now. He'll go to the free throw line. Wow, what a last five, six minutes from Chet Holmgren. You think about this. How many of his block shots go out of bounds? 
Not many. Like one of the best things about being a shot blocker is maintaining possession. Bill Walton talks about this all the time, by the way, if you're missing Bill Walton, he's on ESPN at this moment. But you want to block a shot where you can maintain possession of the basketball. And an excellent job, not just blocking the shot, but grabbing the ball and then driving the ball up the court. And the students behind us right now are chanting overrated. Well, they don't know what they're talking about. They, they apparently have had their eyes closed for the last seven minutes. <laughs> there is nothing overrated about th number 34. Holmgren makes one of two free throws. He's got beautiful shooting touch. Chet has scored all nine of his points in the last seven minutes. I mean, just an excellent job of coming back off the bench. Started off a little sluggish, wasn't as engaged in the game as you wanted to see. Goes to the bench, comes back out, and responds exactly the way that Mark Few would like him to. And true, Timmy's only three for ten shooting in this first half, so Holmgren's been... Very efficient score, mostly down low for the Zags. That's a whistle and a foul. Yeah. Free throws coming up for USD. You know, it's important. We, we, we mentioned USD best start since 2008. Hold that thought, Sean, because NBA Friday, so that's tomorrow. We get the NHL All-Star Skills Competition, and then it's the Sixers. And the Mavs 10 Eastern tomorrow Friday on ESPN streaming on the app. That's going to be a great game. Luca and Joel Embiid is insane as of late. But getting back to my point, you got 10 new players from last season. And one of the things that they've had to really do is use that eight weeks over the summer that they can work out to really build some sort of chemistry. And they've got a lot of different players from different places. And to see them play as well as they've had this year, I think is, is a huge positive. Alcatara with the steal and the layup. Zaga can still get a shot off here. Timmy is going to shoot a runner. It's no good. And the horn sounds. So that a little positive at the end of the first half for the Toreros. Yeah, and, and Mark Hughes not going to be happy with the turnover that led to the easy run out. But look, San Diego tries its best to defend and put itself in a position to find success. But one of the gives up the offensive rebound blocks the shot, takes it length of the floor, draws the foul. That's what teams love about Chad Holmgren. And if I'm Gonzaga, I'm playing through him more in the second half. You mean we were just mere minutes away from Mike actually leaving the game? <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I wouldn't have done it. It was a bad joke. <laughs> Brown soars with Holmgren, I think, affecting that shot. No good in and well, out. He gets credit for his blocks, and then he doesn't get credit necessarily for the shots that he alters. As much as he talks about the block shots, it's also the number of shots he protects at the rim and forces you to throw off your line or your trajectory just a little bit uh, to come up with a miss. There may not be an official stat for that. I guarantee you the Zags and everybody tracks that because it's so true. All right, a couple missed shots here to start the second half. Gonzaga ball. Not everything was perfect for the Zags, though, in those first 20 minutes. No, I mean, you, you mentioned the 0 for 3 from beyond the arc. Now, they didn't need it. They can score in a variety of ways. You see Nemhard get a piece of that paint once again, coming off that on-ball screen. San Diego has to keep the ball handler out of the lane. If they get downhill, you're giving up two points. Gonzaga did not make a 3 in the first half. Pretty amazing. They're up by 16 now. Well, last time out, would they make 18 of them? Yeah. They can beat you in a few different ways. And Mark Few said after the game, they worked hard enough. Every big man can bring it up for the Zags. Drew Timmy oh. led the fast break, and Denmark could not believe he missed the layup. If I'm Timmy, the next time there's a stoppage in play, I'm going to look at him and be like, dude, that was my assist. You get mad when I miss one underneath? That was my assist. Oh, I guarantee you Andrew Nemar is going to hear about that. <laughs> he said no problem. Well, Holmgren for the personal foul on this end, so the freshman Wayne McKinney. Not as heralded, obviously, as Chet Holmgren, not close, but I mean, you could argue that this guy's the biggest recruit as far as recruiting rankings go in the history of this USD program. Well, and he's a local kid. I mean, so much of this roster is transfers. I like seeing the program get built with guys that are local, that want to come up, want to be part of this, are going to have four-year career where they can develop and they can grow intermix in obviously with a lot of the transfers but I think this young man's future is really really bright he's had two games of 17 points already this season one against Cal Poly and, and, and the other against Cal Lou 
Both those were in back-to-back -back games, actually, but he's shown some, some glimpses, and one of the things I like most about his game is his ball control. Pretty good for a freshman playing at the level in which he's playing at. Made both free throws. Holmgren at the free throw line. Got it stripped away by McKinney. His frame, his stature, fits the mold of what you'd expect from a very good high-level guard in the WCC. Yeah, physically, he certainly came to college looking ready to play. Calcaterra three goes down. They're going to check that, make sure it was actually a three. They call it a three for now. They're going to fall into a zone defense here. You know, they're staying with the man. It looked like briefly that they were calling a zone. And then they decided to stay with it. But again, downhill doesn't work. We saw this at shoot around and their on ball screen coverage instead of forcing Gonzaga to reject the screen They're kind of funneling towards the screen, which means you're a chaser So if you're not showing hard on that on ball screen You're giving up points from five feet away, and that's a recipe for disaster against Gonzaga That three from Wayne McKinney is good Threes for the Toreros. Timmy with the left hand. Strother went in for the offensive board and it goes out of bounds off of USD. I'm surprised that wasn't a foul. I mean, he just crashed right over the top of the back. This is the last possession of Nemhard coming off that pick and screen. When you're tra chasing, watch, you're, you're trailing over and then your big is backing up, giving up real estate. Yeah. I mean, you're handing two points to Gonzaga in that moment. Reach in foul against McKinney. That's his second personal. Well, San Diego, I mean, look, they're down 10, 17 minutes to go. We've seen Gonzaga score this many points within the first half of games multiple times this year. Timmy's had a tough night shooting. That time he scores with the shot blocker hand in his face. Before that shot, he did three for 12 from the field. For Drew Timmy, that is very much an off night. We're talking one of the one of the most efficient scorers in all of college basketball. Top five in field goal percentage offense. That three is good. So San Diego starting to eat up from the outside, trying to stay close. Right, the third three here in the second half, and a lot of it's because Gonzaga's going under the screens. Holmgren. Scores with a foul. How about that move? Mike Schmitz talked about don't mistake his frame and his stature for a lack of toughness or strength. And that was a prime example there. You're talking about a guy that played in the ACC that's one of the best shot blockers in the country rotating over right there. And Chet just spaced him out and finished over the top of him, Dave. I mean, the guy that he challenged there, Terrell Brown Soares, that you're speaking of, played at Pitt, his third all-time. Pitt's had a great basketball history, third all-time in block shots in their program's history. That guy's a legitimate shot blocker, and Holmgren went right at him. Completes the three-point play. The fans in the second half behind us are going to start chanting, underrated. <laughs> I'll, we'll alert the uh, viewers when that starts to happen. Calcaterra fumbled and loses it. Holmgren's trailing. Bolton will just slam it home himself. It can happen fast for the Zags. Well, you, you, you make a couple three-point shots, and you've got to maintain your composure. And there are plays that are worth two points, but energy givers. Chet's attack of the rim. That was impressive, and I think that, that picks up the life for everybody else. Now you got a turnover, a stop, and you're running once again. Nemhard, that was good defense by McKinney to cut him off. Now Nemhard's just going to try to play some low post offense. Take advantage of that height advantage. And then Seth said too small, too. I'm not sure he's too small. I, I, I think that was pretty good defense. I think it was just a good offensive move by Nemhard. But Gonzaga goes on a run. Real quick on you. You turn around and you think it 10 point game. We're hitting some threes. Everything's going okay. But then you fumble the ball away and the Gonzaga Bulldogs out in transition. He's become on the offensive end. He's doing a little bit of everything for the Zags. He has. He's got five assists, only one turnover in the game. He's got 12 points shooting better 
than 60% from the field. I mean, he, he just is so smart, so aggressive, and such a central part to how this offense runs. And you look at the history of Gonzaga basketball, the lineage of great guards, and in particular in recent years. That's a, a great take that time by Townsend. But Townsend got loose early. The transfer from Denver got loose early in the first half in the corner for a three. This time gets downhill with the left, bring it back to the right and finish it. He's at the school, just an extremely valued member of this community. For more stellar storytelling like this, stream the Black History Always collection on ESPN+. Plus. One of the greats. No, one of the all-time greats and somebody that has influenced the game at so many different levels and in particular his pride that he has in this program. And we touched about this in the first half, Dave. I mean, you talk about geographical where it's at, this facility, like this is a program that should be in the top tier of the WCC on a year-in, year-out basis. And it's great to see them currently sitting at number three. It's been a heck of a year so far for the Toreros without much expectation. Six and three in conference play. Still time here, down 14 with the ball. That's good defense by Strother. The rebound tapped around, and Strother rips it away. The Tekken just couldn't get any real estate. Strother, three good. It almost looked like he bobbled that a little bit on the catch. Seen a lot of opportunity for those trail threes. But that's the first three pointer of the game for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Pretty remarkable that they're up 54 37, and it took that long to knock down a three. Kakatera scoops it quickly on this end, though. Bolt flung it up, and they're going to call an offensive foul. I guess Erlington got there. Mark Few didn't like that call at all. I mean, you look in transition. One of the things that they do better than any team in the country is they will run off of misses. They will run off of makes. You make a shot, they're going to push it all the way down the floor. And that is a block. That is not a charge. That is 100% a block. As he left the ground into a shooting motion. Uh, there, <laughs> there was no set position, no legal guarding position. Mark Few has a right to be upset about that one. That How about that great take? attack from McKinney with a foul. Do you see why I think this young man is going to be an all-conference caliber player? I, I, I really think that if, if you're looking at building blocks for this Toreros program moving forward, it moves like this that you go, wait, that's a freshman going against what is a first-team All-America type player in Drew Timmy and one of the favorites for the Wooden Award and he took it right back at it. That's a big time move. No fear. That's a mental approach too by number three in white. McKinney, great move. Yeah, three point play makes it a 12 point game. Anton Watson back in for the Zags off the bench. Over the top to Timmy, and from there it's easy. That high-low entry pass. Mark Few has talked about it time and time again. A lot of teams go away from it. They're spreading the floor. They're running a lot of dribble handoff action out on the outside. He goes, look, we, we like to score in the paint, and that high-low action, when you have bigs like we do, it's effective. Townsend down low. Calcaterra had it swatted. Watson tracks it down. Timmy was running the floor in Emhard. Will reset. What a spin move from Timmy. He draws a foul. With this lineup on the floor for San Diego, I would think Drew Timmy is going to touch the ball a lot. So he'll be shooting free throws. Well, great rivalry Saturday coming up in a couple days. Number eight Baylor against number 10 Kansas. That's at four Eastern, three Central. Then of course, maybe the greatest rivalry, not just in college hoops, but beyond Duke and Carolina at the Smith Center. And at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, number 5, Kentucky takes on Alabama. And we're not even done after that. Oh, we got Gonzaga, BYU. Remember two years ago when BYU knocked off Gonzaga? BYU stumbling a little bit heading into this game tonight against San Francisco. 
I mean, that's a big one on Saturday at BYU. And the Marriott Center will be absolutely full. It will be super loud. And BYU is feeling maybe a little more urgency here now. They, they, they've stumbled a bit in the last week. Yeah, Molly McGrath will be joining us on the call of that game as well. That's how you know it's a big game. And you've never had the Cougar tail. I have not. And I may keep it that way. No, you're going to have to try. It's, it's a two-foot-long maple bar. Get out of here with that. Strother lays it in. Man, the quickness in transition for the Zags. I mean, the problem when you play Gonzaga, they make it a little bit of a track meet, right? Because they, they put the, and apply the pressure offensively so much that sometimes your conditioning wears down as the game goes on. San Diego did a great job taking him out of transition in the first half. Second half here, we've seen some runouts for Gonzaga. That's a good point. Townsend, tough shot, good. I mean, it feels, doesn't it, like San Diego's kind of mucked up the game. It hadn't been as pretty as sometimes it is for the Zags. The Zag has 60 with 12 minutes to play. Emhart dribbled around until he found an opening. It's just good. He's really good. I, I mean, that is, that's feel. You know, so much ago. Okay, was that a scripted play? No, no, no. That's feel. And in basketball, it's at its best when you have players that have incredible feel. And I go back to last year's Gonzaga team. Mark Few let them have freedom in the offense because he trusted them. And when you have a play hard player like Andrew Nemhard, you can trust him, and he's going to make the right read. Beautiful feel, zigzagging his way through to find his way, to try to find his shot. He's done a sensational job of that once again here tonight. He's got 14 points to go along with five assists. You're talking 7-11 shooting, Dave. I mean, they're just so efficient in how he attacks. And I think sometimes Holmgren doesn't get credit for all the shots he alters. And he gets credit for the blocks. Nemhard doesn't always get credit for assists when he sets up the offense so beautifully. I mean, last year told you everything you needed to know. He started all that time in the SEC. And he, you're right, he did turn into a starter for the Zags, but spent a lot of the year coming off the bench, never complained about it. Anton Watson with the answer on this end. You know one of the things that is underrated about Gonzaga's offense? They know how to throw a post-entry pass. They do. They like, do. I mean, that is a lost art in Division I basketball for a lot of players. I mean, they just simply don't know how to do it. That was a good pass. That was a good move by McKinney. He'll go back to the free throw line. You know, when a player is posting up, you have to read how they're posting up. You've got to create a passing lane and an angle to be able to dump it down. Strother doesn't waste any time, and he just puts it right where he gets it, away from the defensive player on the high side, throw it on the low side, let him go jump to get it. It's going to allow him to find a rhythm up into a shot. Kenny misses the free throw. The freshman from Coronado High School. You mentioned how great he was coming to high school. About all CIF first team honors. Averaged over 28 points per game. And he just unbelievably strong. And he, he's starting to figure out. You know, he had some turnover issues last two games. Seven turnovers in the last two games heading into tonight. But man, when he, when he figures out how his pacing and how this offense is going to work. It's going to really help them out a ton. And the difficult part is when you have so many new players that also are joining the offense for the first time, everybody's trying to figure out where they want the ball, how they want to receive it, where is their best opportunity to score and make a basket. Pressure not particularly effective for the Toreros that time. Good little high post entry pass, and Holmgren gets it down to Watson, who commits the violation. Three seconds in the key. Goes down as a turnover for the Zags. They're seventh of the night. Do the Toreros have one more push here? Well, obviously, plenty of time for them to make a push. But it starts with sustaining stops and executing well at the offensive end. And this possession, you've got 10 on the shot clock. You really haven't got the ball inside the three-point line. Burlington throws one up and scores with a foul. Okay, the whole position wasn't the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, but it ended up pretty well for the Toreros. It's like some movies that you watch. 
And sometimes you're like, what is going on here? But then all of a sudden the ending, you're like, oh, I got it. Yeah, I'll watch that again. That's basically what that possession was. But, you know, that, that's a possession, too, where because of the way the charges have been called, Watson flopped on that. He really did. I mean, he was leaning back before the content, the contact was made. And just hold your position wall up. I think that's one reason why, among several, that flop charge, the, the, the block charge dispute bugs so many people because you do start to encourage that the more charges you call. Strother heaves one up. Too strong. That's good defense that time by San Diego. They want to make a charge. This guy's got to figure it out. Burlington has not had his best game, and that shot wasn't close. Hard foul. What a nice look. Watson open. Three no good. You know, Mark Feet tells us Anton Watson makes threes all the time in practice and workouts. We're sort of waiting for that to appear in games. Here's Berger for three. Too strong. Second straight possession. Chet Holmgren is bringing the ball to the floor, and he's going to pull without a pass. Why Come not? on. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> He's got 15. They've been super efficient and often spectacular. I mean, he just, the second time in a row, he just brings the ball to the floor. And no passes, no worries. I'm just going to go ahead and shoot the shot. Knock it in from three. They're calling a foul against the Zags. He really has, by the way. Chet Holmgren has, has really started shooting the ball even better than he was from three. I mean, he's really finding his comfort zone. Look at this drill ball, settle into a shot, get his feet set, one, two, step right in, and dial it up. Well, I, you said it in the first half, when he missed one of those, for Mark Few, in most circumstances, that's a good shot. He, yeah. he wants to see Homer take that shot. Well, and the other thing, like, you can talk about it at practice, too, with your bigs. Like, hey, when, when they're coming down, we got to close out. You know, you can't back up. But then you're, you're looking at him coming at you, and you're like, that's a seven-footer. I can gap up here and make sure he doesn't go by me. And because he has the ability to, it, it's tough because if you close out too hard there, he's going to cross you over and he's going to make you look silly and get inside the paint. San Diego's in the bonus makes the front end well on Saturday. NHL All-Star game at 3 Eastern Duke Pacific on ABC and ESPN+. Plus. Then we get to college hoops, Baylor, Kansas, Duke, Carolina. We got the Pro Bowl on Sunday. What a weekend we have. The lineup ahead from the NHL to the NFL with a lot of college hoops in between. I'm excited for the Pro Bowl. You are? Yeah. Huh. And, and what part of it are you excited for? The fact it's in Vegas. Okay. I mean, look, I, I think they, they have fun. It's obviously not a serious game, but they like to have fun. They mess around, show a little bit of their personalities. Hope everybody shows up for the game. Well, that's true, too. I mean, Vegas is... Look at this. Holmgren, three, got another one. <laughs> I knew it was down. That's why I said, look at this, because his feet were set, and you could tell from the angle we were at that there was no doubt that he was going to knock down that shot. Well, we may not be here an underrated chance, but the overrated is gone. Holmgren challenged at the rim and just rejected Brown Soares. Now he brings it up again. He's going to take it all the way. Scores off the glass. Dave. Wow. Dave, what happened to the underrated and overrated chance? Yeah, we're seeing something special. Oh, my goodness. I mean, impacting the game at both ends of the floor. Comes down, hits a three, blocks the shot at this rim, then dribbles it down and absorbs contact and is able to finish through. Three on this end, no good. And then grabs the rebound. Go ahead and pull another three. No, give it back to him. He yeah, should. I dare them to dump it, it off. Here it is. Here we go for three. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> this is insane. Wow. Timeout, San Diego. This is the coming out party. He's played well this year. Tonight's the night. I, I mean, just absolutely bonkers. You look at what he just did. He scored eight points in the last three possessions. You get the block at the defensive end. This is after, by the way, he already...
what drives me is uh, the people that believe in me, uh, even more than the people that don't. Uh, you know, people believe in me, uh, believe what I can be, so, you know, I strive every day to, you know, reach that potential. Dave, he scored 11 points in 1 minute and 38 seconds, and Mike Schmitz spent the last two and a half minutes on the phone going, guys, okay, I'm pretty sure I can cement myself as believing that Chet might be the number one pick in the NBA draft. I have him number one. Can we move him any higher? He's a Is there anywhere for us to push him? Okay, he had three three-pointers, a layup, a block shot, and a rebound in a minute and 38. I mean, really, truly, you can't have a better two minutes than he just had. You can't do it. And I know he's played well this year. He has. I mean, his efficiency numbers are incredible. You talked about, and Mike talked about, some of the unique things he's doing statistically. There have been little spurts where you see, like, a spectacular move. Tonight's the night. I mean, he first 10 minutes of this game, he hadn't taken a shot. Since then, he has absolutely dominated this game. 23-12. He's got 23 points, 12 rebounds, three block shots. An assist. He's brought the ball up about half their possessions in the last five minutes. I mean, literally, if, if you're watching the draft on, on ESPN in June, they might just show that one minute and 38 seconds. They might. They might. And you don't have to clip it. You, there's no editing involved. Just run the tape. Bolton goes right down the lane. Man, he wanted to slam that one down. Draws the foul. Okay, so you're doing some producing for the NBA draft show now. <laughs> All right, guys, this is the first pick <laughs> in the NBA draft. <laughs> I mean, just you see his feet get set, and he's just so smooth with it. The block shot underneath, and again, keeping it alive, not just blocking the shot, but then corralling it, able to score at the other end of the floor. That was a special 138. That, listen, I'm, I'm sitting here calling a college basketball game. You have fun, and it is fun to watch somebody compete and play the way that he plays, period. Oh, I turned into a fan for him. I'm yelling at him to shoot, pass him the ball. <laughs> oh, man, this is, listen, the WCC's had a banner season so far. They've got four teams that have the potential to make the NCAA tournament. It would be the first time in league history you'd have four. They've done three twice, would have had a third in 2020 had the tournament not been canceled. The best team in the conference still remains the team in blue that's on the floor in front of us right now, and that's, that's Gonzaga. Good shot from Marcellus Erlington with Holmgren's hand in his face. Holmgren, that was a tough one, came up well short. Pull him. <laughs> Set him down. You got to teach the youngster, you can't take shots like that. No, I'm just kidding. Burlington, another good move. They this need to get, shot. like, he's had a great season so far. The transfer from St. John's, averaging almost 14 points per game. He's had career best so far in points per game, rebounds per game, assists per game, steals per game. He's having a career season here at USD. Tonight has not been his night. And if you're going to beat Gonzaga, your best players have to play like they're the best players on the floor. Yeah, he's got nine. He's four for ten from the field. Shot clock winding down. Watson will shoot the jumper. That one's good. Long two for Anton Watson. There's so many weapons. Uh, you know, you and I will hop on a plane and fly to Provo tomorrow. And I asked Mark if we could just jump on the charter. He said the seats were full. <laughs> I'm shocked that he didn't just invite us on. Holgren swats that one away. Here's Bolton, the trailer this time. His three goes down. Man, they can put it on the hurry. They struggled to score the ball in the first half. I mean, they had 38 points. That's a struggle for them based on how efficient they've been offensively. And here in the second half, it has just been an explosion and a barrage. That's a foul. Yeah, he closed out. And he, I think he gave the signal to the bench about 30 seconds before that that he's a little gassed. And that might have been a factor there, committed the foul. What a night for the kid from Minneapolis. That's been a 17-5 run for the Zaga Bulldogs here. 
Well, another reminder, don't miss college hoops on Saturday. Baylor, Kansas, 4 Eastern. Duke, Carolina, 6 Eastern from the Dean Dome. Kentucky, Alabama, 8 Eastern. Gonzaga, BYU at 10 Eastern, all on ESPN. They'll stream live on the app. I mean, those games are NCAA tournament second weekend type games. Big time. It, and, and obviously you add in the mix of just the conference rivalries and what they mean in the standings. I, I think it just enhances all of it that much more. Well, Mark Few, congratulations, but also wanted to make sure. A little teaching moment there. The, the relationship that Mark builds with his players is what makes him so special. So much of being a college coach today is about relationships, trust that you build with your players. Can you coach up your best players? And Mark coaches up his best players every single year, and he coaches them extremely hard. It's not a coincidence that he's the coach who now is reeling in. I mean, Chet Holmgren was the number one high school player in the country. Watson down low. That's been Greg who lays it in with a foul. Ben Gregg hadn't had a chance to play a whole lot. Still a very young player. He left high school, really left his senior year on the table, uh, and joined Gonzaga last year as part of that. What I liked about what he did right there was he kept his shoulders parallel to the baseline and received that ball and was able to finish the bench. Loves it. Chet Holmgren right up, right away. Get yourself some points. Missed the free throw, but still a nice move. I mean, you're right. It, 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 last year, COVID was going to impact his high school schedule. He'd already committed to Gonzaga. He just made a good defensive play on this end. So he decided to, to leave high school, enroll early, which doesn't happen a whole lot in hoops because they weren't going to play any high school games. Yep. And he was a part of that natural runner-up team. He just, he just needs time. And, and, you know, everybody's journey is a little bit different. You look at where you're ranked coming out of high school and you think, hey, uh, one plus one is two. Well, sometimes you, you need to have a couple more steps along the way to get you there. Miss that shot. Final four minutes here from San Diego. A whistle and a foul. Townsend draws one. So that'll send us to a timeout. The number two ranked team in the country behind an incredible night from Chet Holmgren. Up big. I receive. The Chargers have got to be in the postseason next year. <laughs> like they you're, have to be. You're, you can't call a timeout, by the way, in that moment in which they called the timeout in the Raiders game. I'm still, I'm still scratching my head on that. But I'm still trying to get over my 49ers losing last week. Tough one. And now Jimmy G, he's gone. Right? They're, they're, they're yeah. going to trade him. Yeah, get rid of him. Is it like Trey team. Lance time, or you oh, know, yeah. do they go get Aaron Rodgers? No, I, I think it's Trey Lance Is that time. tampering as a 49ers fan if I say I'd like to see Aaron Rodgers finish out his career and give Trey some more time? No, you're allowed to say that. Okay. They're not allowed. Well, maybe they are now. I don't know if the contract details for the great Aaron Rodgers. By the way, uh, Gonzaga in the second half, 67% from the field. 63 percent from beyond the arc and that that that's after a first half where they didn't make a three-point shot they went 0 for three in the first half they got five of eight here in the second well, sloppy from the freshman hunter salas had it poked away that's a gonzaga turnover well, this is a great opportunity for the depth of this team to get quality minutes you know and and yeah the score may be one-sided here but what you want to see is can you execute can you stay with the game plan I think Greg, nice job again on defense. He's made two good defensive plays, made a nice move on offense, and there goes Hickman right down the lane with the left hand. Going to be good. Really good. Might be your next big zag star, Nolan Hickman. the corner the three a little too strong Ben Greg rebound coming in providing some good minutes very much so he's gonna get a touchdown low Salas a little loose again found Hickman though play by Greg to save it in bounds Anton Watson scores with a foul Yeah, 
They just wear you down over time. I mean, they, they really do. And that, that's, they can come at you in waves. And look, I don't think this team's as, as good as last year's team. I mean, when you think about the makeup of last year's team and the Corey Kispert leadership and just how much that meant and his ability to stretch it from the outside, Jalen Suggs and Nemhard in the backcourt together. I mean, that was just a spectacular team that had a historical run. Now, that doesn't mean, though, that the end result of this year's team may not be that one step that still remains. Because in college basketball this year, there really isn't a great team. There's a lot of really, really good teams. Auburn is a really good team. And what Bruce Pearl has done has been phenomenal. Arizona, I think, is a Final Four National Championship caliber team with Tommy Lloyd, the former assistant at the helm. But this Gonzaga team isn't going anywhere. I think it's a good point. Both things can be true. The Zags team may not quite measure up, although they're very, very good. But they could also win it all. Greg, offensive rebound, missed the putback. I, I will say this. For Gonzaga, I mean, no Suggs, no Kispert, no Ayayi. Talented players. Those guys are so tough to replicate. Nice looking shot from TJ. Burger, but they have Chet Holmgren. Yeah, and the upside in a single game, in an NCAA tournament game, for that kid, I mean, he could just put him on his back and say, we're going to win it all. He's that good, I think. I, I think there's matchups, though, like when you think about potential matchups against Kentucky with Oscar Sheboy. And I think Oscar Sheboy is the most dominant player in college basketball this season. He's leading the nation in rebounds, and what he's meant for that Kentucky team, which, by the way, has played them, their way into that thought process of being a team that could win a national championship. You were on that one early. A couple weeks ago, when they were 18th in the country, I, I said they're the, they're the most underrated team in college basketball. And because you could see the pieces starting to gel, and Ty Ty Washington, when Wheeler was out, started playing very well, and then Wheeler gave, came back, and, and they took the loss to Auburn at Auburn. Uh, but no shame in that, and they, they did that without Ty Ty as he went down with an ankle injury in the first half of that game. And Ty Ty Washington's a guy that Mike Schmidt studies a lot of film on because he's he's going to be a lottery pick this year. Lang in the game, Martinez Arlauskas in the game, some players for the Zags who don't often get to play. That elbow jumper from Nolan Hickman. Dave, they had 38 points in the first half. They have 92 now with a minute left to go. And what a great second half by the Gonzaga Bulldogs. All sparked, by the way, by Chet Hunger. Uh, really? I'm, I'm being serious. Were you doubting me? No, I was. I was agreeing with you. He was the spark tonight. That jumper came up short. Final 35 seconds. Salas is going to go one on four and draw a foul. Gonzaga has now scored over 90 points in 12 different occasions this year. I believe they have seven games of over 100 points this season. I mean, on, a, on a night where San Diego, it felt like they were kind of forcing the Zags for a good chunk of this game to play their style. Slow it down, muck it up a little bit. Six different players with 10 or more for the Zags. I mean, it's, it's, it's all five starters. And then, as I mentioned in the first half, Watson now for five straight games has been averaging better than 11 points per contest. Yeah, it's a good sign. Tech in, no, Ben Gregg. Stuff in the box score in these last few minutes. He's grabbed, what, five rebounds, I think, now? Yeah, he's got five rebounds. In a very limited period of time. Final horn sounds, and after all that, where the Toreros really looked like they were ready to make this a bit of a game, they lose by 30. Uh, I mean, Chet Holmgren and Andrew Nemhard, I think tonight are, are the focal point for me. I mean, we came in the game talking about the guard, and Nemhard had 14 points to go with seven assists, but then Chet. That minute 38 was as fun as entertaining a basketball I've watched in a two-minute sport all season long. 11 points, a block shot, 